you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Living the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up team? Coach D here coming at you from beautiful sunny San Diego. And today we are going to be talking about why you may not be achieving your fat loss goals, why you may be working as hard as you possibly can, eating the healthiest you possibly can, but seeing no results or very little return on your hard efforts. I talk to almost 100 people every single day coming in and out of our fitness studio. And a lot of times I hear very common themes. I'll talk to the busy business person with a family and minimal downtime in their life who works out very consistently and has the routine down. Or I'll even talk to the stay-at-home parent with three kids who does their best to squeeze in a workout a few times a week in order to maintain their health. I'll talk to the person who is just absolutely frustrated with their health and it has declined over many years of sitting at a desk job or trying to eat healthy, but always resigning to a few cheap meals here and there, or process late night snacks at home, or constant battles of finding motivation to work out, but then having periods of time where they just say completely, screw it, I wanna fall off and lose all this motivation after not seeing any results. I totally get it. These situations are way more common than you can imagine. What if I told you there was a secret sauce you could use to turbocharge your results? Not only with fat loss, but increasing your overall health, your energy, focus, just crushing what life has to throw at you. Well, you probably already know what I'm going to say just from reading the title of this podcast, but it's so true. If there's one overlooked aspect to your fat loss goals, I would guess that it's most likely your sleep. We're going to take a deep dive into the benefits of sleep, what happens with bad sleep, how to prioritize and optimize sleep so that you can operate at the highest levels during your day-to-day routine. If there's one thing that people know is good for them, but really doesn't put that much importance on it, and they really need to, it's getting the best sleep quality possible in order to set them up for the success the following day. So on today's episode, again, we're going to be discussing the benefits of sleep, the things that happen when you have sleep deprivation, hacks, tips, and strategies to increase the quality of your sleep, and hopefully a readjustment of your priorities when it comes to losing those extra LBs. But before we get into the topic of the day, I want to start by thanking the sponsors of this podcast. This podcast was brought to you by Lululemon. Lululemon has some of the best athletic wear from females and males. I pretty much only wear Lululemon. The quality of the material and the durability and breathability are perfect for my active life. Plus, the people, the tribe of Lululemon are amazing. Another one of our sponsors is Dirt Food, healing and delicious superfoods made by hand and made with love by one of my good friends, local San Diego resident, Nika Blunt. She created this on her own, made by hand and made with love in her own kitchen, She wanted to find a superfood that could help her fight the two types of cancer that she had. So she created a delicious and healthy superfood granola that she makes by hand in her small batches in her kitchen. She also has things like dirty balls and dirt spice, all types of things that are delicious and healthy. Visit eatdirtfood.com and use the discount code DIRTYDAMIAN for 10% off your entire order. I eat it almost every single day as a snack, and it gets auto-shipped to my door on a monthly subscription. So eatdirtfood.com, and the discount code is DIRTYDAMIEN, D-I-R-T-Y-D-A-M-I-E-N, no space. That's the discount code for 10% off your entire order. And now on to the topic of the day. So I'd like to start off by doing a little recap of one of our previous episodes that we did about the four pillars of fat loss. Those four huge pillars were movement, nutrition, stress management, and sleep. Movement, nutrition, stress management, and sleep. And while all four of these are very important pillars, if you'd like to streamline your fat loss goals, you should probably do your best to get all four dialed in together. But really, none of them are going to matter if you don't fix your sleep. Sleep occupies a third of your life, or at least it should if you really understand its importance. I always used to say that sleep was a waste of time. 
I could go out on the weekends with my friends and pull an all-nighter. And then even the next night, maybe get like four or five hours of sleep. And I decided that I wanted to, quote unquote, catch up on sleep during the week. But usually not. Mostly because I like to work out late. And I also like to stay up late watching movies. I used to joke and say that I'll sleep when I'm dead. When I told my friends about my lack of sleep and what I did instead, as they looked at me with these wide eyes of disbelief, that I wasn't some sort of walking zombie at this point. They didn't understand how I could do it. Now, sleep is not lost time. I used to think it was just lost time. It's not just a way to rest when you're tired and when you have nothing better to do. More than half of adults claim that they do not get enough sleep. More than half. Let's recap the four pillar episode and talk about the long list of benefits that sleep has to offer. If we think about human life when it comes to evolution, why would we ever want to turn off our brain and all of our awareness and put us in the most compromised state you can think of. If sleep wasn't important, we would have phased it out thousands of years ago. A caveman asleep would be way easy prey for a saber-toothed tiger or a big predator. It has to have an importance to have made it into our human lifestyle today. Sleep increases your concentration levels, giving you the foundation to learn, create, and teach. Sleep is extremely important when it comes to having a strong and healthy immune system, keeping us from getting sick and helps us fight off infections and viruses when we do get sick. Sleep increases your overall emotional well-being, making us happier, more caring human beings. And sleep is vital and critical to your success and health. During sleep, your body balances and regulates its important systems, respiration, circulation, and immune response is all controlled and enhanced through the process of good quality sleep. Sleep is extremely important to the brain as well. One fifth of your body's circulatory blood is sent to the brain during sleep. And when you're sleeping, your brain is being restructured and cleansed. And this plays a huge role in your memory and how you're able to process information. But was, what does any of this have to do with your body fat loss goals, right? Even if you don't care about any of those previous things mentioned. Lack of sleep is one of the largest risk factors in obesity. We've discussed this study done back in 2010 where there were two groups of people that had the exact same calorie deficit diet. Remember, a calorie, de calorie deficit diet is what we're looking for if you're looking for any kind of body fat loss goals. One group got the five and a half hours of sleep while the other group got the eight and a half hours of sleep, so a three hour difference. And by the end of the 14 day study, the group that got eight and a half hours of sleep lost 55 more percent body fat than the other group. And the crazy part was, is that the short five and a half hour group actually lost important and valuable muscle tissue. So essentially when you lack sleep, it lowers your inhib inhibition levels. It lowers your willpower and your motivation, and you lose the ability to recover from your training. I say this all the time, and I'm going to continue to say it. It is in the recovery where you rebuild, re-strengthen, repair, and progress. Your sleep and recovery are as important, if not more important, than your exercise program and your diet plan. Sleep can help you train better, help you make better choices, and it can help with the stresses that life has to offer. Now, when we're sleep deprived, there are many attributes that contribute to weight gain. Poor mental clarity leading to poor decisions, sluggish activity, leading to less movement throughout the day, increased time awake, leading to more snacking, usually late at night, poor recovery of the soft tissue, leading to increased hunger levels, especially if you're one of those high intense trainers, and even testosterone, growth hormone, and anabolic hormone levels. All of these are cut in half, five days of five hours of sleep. So if you get five days of five hours of sleep around there, which a lot of people do, all those hormone levels cut in half. And they're going to continue to drop in hormone levels until that person has reestablished a consistent healthy sleep routine. Now, the science behind sleep has been getting a lot more attention these past few years because of all the benefits that increased sleep are showing. Let's look at how sleep can benefit fitness and weight loss specifically. You might think that being awake you'd burn more calories overall because your heart rate is higher when you're awake. So the longer you're awake, the more calories you burn, right? But this is only one factor, and it's ignoring that the body is a huge systemic organism. 
It's not just one thing here and there. It's all together. It's a holistic being. And it needs to be observed as a whole entire being. I believe we have a problem when it comes to our Western way of looking at health where everything is com compartmentalized. You have a headache, take an Excedrin. You have gut issues, just take some Pepto-Bismol. We need to look at the entire internal chemistry of the body and be aware of what lack of sleep can do to you in the following days to hinder the process of burning body fat. In a very recent study in 2018, the study was done taking a group of people and separating them into two groups. The first group was the control group, and they got their normal seven to nine hours of sleep, where the second group was told to limit their sleep. This was about an hour less of sleep for five nights of the week, and then they could do whatever they want and sleep however much they wanted during the other two nights on the weekend. So on the weekdays, they were limited one hour less, and then on the weekends, they could do whatever they wanted. Both groups were in a calorie deficit as well in order to elicit that body fat loss. Now, here's what's interesting. Because both groups were in a deficit, both groups actually lost about the same amount of quote-unquote weight. However, hold on. I'm saying weight. The group with the full night's rest lost a higher percentage of fat mass, whereas the sleep-deprived group actually lost a higher percentage of that valuable lean muscle mass. So in the short term... And if you only use the scale to measure your results, you may think that sleep doesn't have any real effects on your body fat loss goals. But we already know what having less lean muscle mass can do for you in the long term when it comes to your daily caloric burn and your overall health down the road. Also, the group that slept for one hour less had lower levels of the hormone leptin. This is a chemical that tells your body that it's going into starvation mode. The lower leptin gets in the body, the hungrier you get. It forces your brain to start looking for ways to start saving energy, including ways to start using less energy throughout the day, but also increases your hunger, which is going to make you go for those calorie-dense and probably processed foods. Lower amounts of leptin makes it easier for your body to hold on to fat. And plenty of other hormones are tweaked as well when you don't sleep, including insulin, the chemical that shuttles glucose into the cells. Subjects in experiments of shortened sleep usually have impaired insulin sensitivity. Their muscles will use 20 to 30 percent less glucose compared to if they slept normally. So they're using less energy. That's not a good thing if you're trying to burn body fat. Now, if you have all this extra glucose in the blood and then you get increased cortisol, which is highly increased after pulling an all nighter, extra cortisol works with insulin to store all this extra glucose in your blood. Where? As fat. And if you have all that extra glucose in your blood from the lack of sleep, then, well, it's just a terrible combination if you're looking to keep glucose out of your fat cells and to be stored as body fat. We would love to use the glucose as energy, but the lack of sleep starts a domino effect of reactions that makes it almost impossible for us to do so. We are hungrier, we have less energy and motivation to move, and we have impaired judgment when it comes to the food choices that we make. It's no wonder people get frustrated and feel like they're battling and going with an uphill battle. Now, a meta-analysis study done in 2015 took a bunch of sleep deprivation studies and tried to find common themes that they could make some conclusions on. One thing that was pretty clear from all the studies was that lack of sleep seemed to cause a clear increase in calorie intake, whether it was measured in calories or just portion sizes. Subjects were more likely to eat more and the less sleep that they got. And this makes total sense to us, doesn't it? I mean, think about what happens when you stay up all night. You're binge watching Netflix. There's a break between the episodes you're watching. Your brain, well, now it's semi-bored and you check out. You're not going to go to the kitchen and make a bowl of broccoli or Brussels sprouts. You're not going to grill up some salmon. You're not going to grab that tall glass of water. What are you going to do? You're reaching for that high-calorie, processed junk food that tastes delicious that you can easily snack on for the next hour while washing it down with some sort of rich, sugary, sweet-tasting beverage. Literally, millions of dollars are invested into these products by some of the smartest food scientists and marketers in the world. It's designed for them to do that exact thing in that exact situation. As it turns out, 
it's not because you lose willpower. It's not entirely your fault. Your brain chemistry actually changes to making that food more appealing and more hedonistic than ever before. One analogy that I like to use when it comes to lack of sleep is I also like to think about your body like a cell phone battery. As your cell phone battery depletes, if you don't recharge it, it gets so low that it actually turns on low power mode where it stops doing the processes that cost the most energy and it turns your performance of your phone to an absolute minimal uh, level in order for you to keep the battery from dying. Well, your body does the same thing. Leptin is the culprit here. It's doing its best to save you. As leptin decreases, it's turning your body into low power mode. But at what cost when it comes to your body fat loss goals? Leptin also signals for fullness to your brain. So when leptin drops, so does your signal for fullness. You're going to get these constant cravings and thinking you're hungry, even though you just ate a full bag of Doritos. Yeah, you can partly blame the drop in leptin for that. Another hormone that you've probably heard of is ghrelin. This is the hormone that raises your overall appetite. I like to think of ghrelin as like this little gremlin inside of you that's asking for more sweet and savory foods. So ghrelin, gremlin, it raises your overall appetite. While it's getting more and more rare nowadays, you may have that one friend in your life that really is never hungry. This may be in part that they have low levels of ghrelin. Now you want to get to a point where the leptin and the ghrelin are in balance. They should be working together to tell you when you are actually hungry and when you're actually full. But then you throw in the lack of sleep, and sure enough, a sleep study out of Wisconsin that showed when people only got five hours of sleep, they had a 15% increase in ghrelin compared to the subjects who slept the full eight hours, which is really interesting. Now, with all these studies being done on sleep and hormones, it seems like they take a less really important look at ghrelin and mainly focus on leptin. So there's not a whole lot of research on ghrelin, but they all seem to show that sleep deprivation either increases or doesn't change the level of ghrelin. So what's really important there is that none of them showed a decrease in ghrelin. After all those studies, ghrelin doesn't decrease. So at the very best case scenario, it seems to lack, that lack of sleep doesn't have really any benefit for us in that department, which is kind of a dust statement. Sleep deprivation also causes a decrease in serotonin, the neurotransmitter that controls happiness. So if we start to have a drop in serotonin from lack of sleep, we all know that the sweet and salty foods definitely bump up your levels of serotonin, like duh, so that's what you're gonna reach for. Think about when you see someone's face after they eat a big bite of chocolate. I'm pretty sure that's where the term O-face came from. Like, oh my goodness, this is an explosion of heaven in my mouth. Or maybe it came from somewhere else. I don't know. But either way, the serotonin's kicking in full force right there. So of course, people are going to reach for those foods that get the serotonin levels back up when they drop low. Okay, but what happens if you decided, I'm going to sleep less so that I can exercise more? Genius, right? I want to take that hour of sleep and instead I want to go to the gym and I want to get my beast mode on. Yeah, it's a great thought and you can sleep when you're dead, right? Well, scientifically and physiologically, that is wrong. Not only are you more likely to skip the gym when you are lacking sleep, but if you get there, your peak power output, your motivation, your willpower, and your ability to recover from that training are all dampened by being sleep deprived even after just one night of lost sleep. Let's also discuss what else occurs when you start to get regular sleep deprivation. Lack of sleep will prevent your brain from making new memories. It's like the memory inbox of your brain shuts down. You have a harder time taking new information in and making them into memory memories. We also know that the lack of sleep will lead to an increased development of toxic protein in the brain, beta amyloid which is associated with Alzheimer's disease. It is during your deep sleep at night when the brain can clean and flush out toxic waste that builds up throughout the day. Once you start losing those hours of deep sleep throughout the night, that beta amyloid protein waste never gets cleared out of the brain and can start going through some major issues. This means a greater possibility of dementia later on in life, which to me is the most terrifying thing out there. I can't picture anything worse than your brain slowly deteriorating and losing the ability and just to mentally function. I would do anything to avoid something like that. 
There are also many different effects of sleep deprivation on the body as well. We all know that lack of sleep affects your reproductive system. Males that only get five to six hours of sleep on average have lower testosterone. They've been measured to have testosterone levels of a man that's 10 years older than their current age. So lack of sleep could age you up to a decade or more older than you really are in that department. Not good. Also, it is both anecdotally and scientifically known that the lack of sleep definitely has an impact on your immune system. So after just one night of four to five hours of sleep, there is a significant drop, 70% deduction in your natural killer cells, your NK cells. After just one night of four to five hours of sleep, 70% drop in your natural killer cells. These are the natural cancer fighting cells in the body that can help fight against damaged or mutated cells. This is the reason that we know that short sleep has a direct correlation with an increase in cancer most notably the bowel, prostate, and breast cancer. The link to cancer and lack of sleep is so strong that even the World Health Organization, the WHO, has had to make a statement that late shift work or graveyard shifts are classified as a probable carcinogen. That's insane. Think about that. How much does it take for the government to really make statements like that? And they admit that it more than likely contributes to higher cancer rates. Wow. So you have to think about that when applying for these types of shifts. So just like smoking or just like too much UV light that you have not built up a tolerance for, your job could induce cancer because of the disruption of your sleep rhythms. That's crazy. We also know that lack of sleep impacts your cardiovascular system because it's during deep sleep at night when you're receiving this kind of form of, uh, in a roundabout way, a blood pressure medication. Your heart rate drops and your blood pressure decreases because your body is in this ultimate rest cycle. And what that does for your cardiovascular system is in essence, it gives it a break and it gives it a chance to reboot itself. So if you're getting six hours of sleep or less, it has been shown in the stats that you have a 200% increase in having a fatal heart attack or a stroke in your lifetime. If you're getting six hours of sleep or less, it has been shown that you have a 200% increase in having a fatal heart attack or stroke in your lifetime. That is some scary stuff right there, especially for someone like me, who I used to commonly use the phrase, I'll sleep and I'm dead. Or I love doing those all-nighters with friends and I bragged about being able to work the next day without having even just a minute of sleep. That's really scary to me. And what's even scarier is that I know that I'm probably doing something right now in my everyday life that could be equally detrimental to my health, and I don't even know that I'm doing it. This definitely makes me want to change my entire outlook and approach that I have on health and how I live now. I never want to stop learning about the stuff, and I never want to stop making changes for the better. No one is perfect, but we can ch chase that mark by educating ourselves, learning all that we can on how we can be the healthiest human being possible and being nice to ourselves when we know that we're not doing something right and taking the steps to make changes. Another stat that we can look at is that this thing that happens to a billion people twice a year, what is it? I'm talking about daylight savings time. In the spring, when we spring forward and we all lose an hour, check this out. The data shows a predictable increase in heart attacks of 24% higher the following day. Just from losing an hour, the data shows that people have 24% more heart attacks the following day. And while I know this is not a direct correlation, you can't say that this causes that, it's definitely something to be aware of. Now, scientists understand how lack of sleep can have some real negative effects on the human body and the brain. And studies have been done to see really how fast do these effects take place. How long can a person go before they start to see noticeable cognitive decline or impairments in the body? Studies show that the time frame without sleep is only about 16 hours. After 16 hours of no sleep, then we start to see mental and physical deterioration of the body. After around 20 hours, then your mental capacity is so impaired, so much that you would be compared to someone that is drunk and you'd be dangerous as a driver behind a vehicle. So that's less than a day of no sleep and you're already that messed up.
If you ever go beyond 16 hours of sleep, you better be super responsible with what you're doing and why you're doing it and make sure that you get a very restful eight hours or more of sleep to be able to recycle both the brain, the cardiovascular system, and all those other systems that need time to recover in order to operate properly. When you start to think of lack of sleep as low-level brain damage, as it should be, you really start to reconsider prioritizing sleep in your life and then also trying to get the best quality sleep possible in order to optimize your daily performance. And of course, we're going to be definitely discussing later on the tips and the strategies to maximize your sleep. Now, what about those of us who are getting seven to eight hours of sleep or more? Should we dis disregard everything that I've said so far? The answer is definitely not. You may be in bed for that period of time, but what is your actual sleep quality? If you've ever worn a sleep tracker, you may be extremely surprised at what you find. I've been wearing a sleep tracker for over a year now, and it's incredible to watch how my daily activities and my choices affect the quality of sleep that I'm getting. Anything from excess physical or emotional stress, from alcohol consumption, from watching different genres of shows and movies on different devices right before bed, all of these have a huge impact on my sleep. Well, let's talk about the four different stages of sleep before we go into the quality of sleep. When your head hits the pillow at night, you will most likely be moving through all four stages throughout the night. Every night, the body and the mind transition through these multiple stages, and collectively, this is known as the sleep cycle. The cycle lasts about 90 minutes and comprises of a period of non-REM sleep followed by REM sleep. REM stands for rapid eye movement, REM, REM sleep or non-REM sleep. So stage one of non-REM sleep, you have light sleep as we drift in and out of sleep, our eye movement gets slower and our muscle activity starts to relax. That's stage one. When you roll into stage two, your eye movement stops, your muscle activity stops and brain waves start to slow down. Once we get to non-REM stage three, the transitional period between light sleep and very deep sleep, your brain produces these very slow delta waves. And then once you get into REM sleep, the heart, breath, and blood pressure rise again. Your body is paralyzed, eye movement is quick, and dreams begin. Now, understanding these sleep cycles is important as we strive to implement our own sleep health practices. Stage one non-REM, you'll be in very, only a little bit, like out of the whole 90 minute cycle, maybe only two to eight minutes. This is a fairly awake stage of sleep. You don't wanna be here long because you're not getting the benefits that sleep has to offer when you're here. You're getting the least amount of benefits. Now stage two, this is where you'll spend most of your night. Think of this as light sleep. You'll be here for over half the 90 minute cycle from anywhere between 45 and 60 minutes. Now stage three, this is the money maker. This is the non-REM deep sleep. These slow delta waves occur here. This is where you'd like to work on increasing your time spent for the most restorative sleep possible. And out of the whole 90 minute cycle, you'll spend only about seven to 20 minutes there. For me, I only get about an hour of deep sleep a night and you should really be shooting for like 90 minutes of sleep. Uh, I know I follow a couple of sleep biohackers and they brag about getting like four or five hours of deep sleep because of all these things they do, but you know, it's, it's very tough. You'll be very surprised at how hard it is to get into that deep sleep if you don't take the right procedures and the right precautions to give yourself the best quality sleep. And then once you move out of stage three and you go into that REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, you're, this is the dreaming portion of where you're sleeping, which makes up of about 15 to 25 minutes of your cycle. So that's just the averages for the average adult. And those can always shift and change depending on, you know, the quality that you're getting. If we talk about the benefits of being in a deep sleep longer, they include energy restoration, cell regeneration, increased blood supply to the muscles, which is especially important for repairing all the hard work that you do during your workouts. And then it promotes growth and repair of the tissues and bones. And it gives us much more needed strength to our immune system. Now, knowing all of this is important, but if you don't have a way to track it, you really won't know what kind and how much of that sleep you're getting. Now, there are many, many different trackers out there to track your sleep and your physical activity, but I can't recommend enough investing in one that you can use. 
Having an awareness is the first and largest step you can take in really understanding and having objective numbers to look at when it comes to how much you're moving and how much you're sleeping and how well you're sleeping. You may not wear the device forever, but how do you know where you want to go if you don't know where you are right now? And it doesn't matter how accurate these things are as long as they're consistent and you can see changes in time. There are Fitbits, there are Garmin's, there are iWatches, and tons of other trackers out there. For me, I myself, I wear an Aura Ring, O-U-R-A. I've tried dozens, dozens of other trackers, and the Aura Ring beats them all for me. I have no affiliation with them, of course, but I can't recommend this ring enough. It's super low profile, it's small, I never have to take it off, and I only have to charge it like once a week. It gives you a sleep score, and it breaks down every single sleep stage and gives you a weekly, yearly, and average report that you can look at for changes over time. It's super cool. Very, very user-friendly. If you don't know much about like, like bio stats and stuff like that, it totally still you can use it. I absolutely love the Aura Ring. Now, whatever you get, it doesn't matter. Remember, as long as it's consistent, you're looking for a consistent use and finding your baseline. How many steps a day are you taking and how much deep sleep and REM sleep are you getting? What quality is your sleep? Once you can see where you're at, you can start making changes to your daily and nightly routine to see how those changes are either positively or negatively affecting your sleep quality. Seriously, get a tracker, invest. I promise if you actually wear it, it won't be a waste of money and you don't have to wear it forever. Once you figure out what works for you, Boom, you can take it off and you can just have that routine for the rest of time. Now, on a little side note here, when it comes to naps, I get a ton of questions about napping. Um, Dr. Allison J. Brager, a neuroscientist from the Army, has spent years studying and leveraging sleep science to provide fatigue management solutions for the front lines. And if you know anything about the military, those guys get so tired. I was in the Army National Guard, and when we were going through basic training, that's literally the biggest battle is trying to know when to not fall asleep like standing up. And these guys can take naps literally anywhere, under a desk, just standing in a corner anywhere. Um, so according to Dr. Brager, 20 to 30 minutes is all you need when it comes to naps, 20 to 30 minutes, just like at night, right before you go to bed, you have a drop in core temperature. Well, the same thing happens in the afternoon. That's why you have that midday slump where you feel kind of sleepy. Sometimes people feel like right around two or three, but anything over 30 minutes will start to affect your sleep at night. There were theories that if you napped for 90 minutes, you would get that full sleep cycle, right? Because they last about 90 minutes. But this is said by subject experts to be false. After studying a bunch of firefighters and police shift workers who have 48-hour shifts and have been equipped with these bio sleep trackers, and often they take multiple naps during their long shifts. So 20 to 30 minutes is all you need. 90 minutes is going to be too much, and it's going to start to affect your sleep at night. Before we get to some actionable items, let's briefly go over sleep supplements, right? Everyone's looking for that quick pill. There are tons of pills and tinctures out there that claim to knock you out. Sleeping pills are used all the time, but should we really be forcing our body to go to sleep like that? I feel like that's kind of the same thing as just knocking someone over the head with a two by four. Yeah, they're going to go to sleep, but probably not the best way to go about doing this thing. One of the well-known supplements in the sleep industry is magnesium. You can get magnesium in a spray and you can rub it onto your sore muscles or you can get it in a pill and powder form for pre-sleep. I myself, I actually use both. I use Ease Magnesium Spray. I love the way it makes my muscles feel after a long day of coaching. I'll rub it on my legs, I'll rub it on my shoulders or my neck. And then I also take a magnesium supplement pill just before bed. Did you know that up to 80% of Americans are not getting their daily recommended magnesium intake. And cravings for specific foods could be an indication of a deficiency in either a micro or a macronutrient. In particular, a craving for chocolate could highlight a magne magnesium deficiency. So magnesium, it's an essential mineral and is required for over 300 enzyme reactions in the body. Maybe that chocolate craving could could say that you have magnesium deficiency? Maybe. Probably not because chocolate is delicious, but you know what I'm saying. So melatonin is a very commonly used supplement, and melatonin is 
probably something that you should be very, very weary about. The problem is it really should only be used if you're trying to shift your sleep cycle when traveling or changing your sleep routine to help your body deal with this large, slow change being made. When you take melatonin every single day, you develop a tolerance and then that affects your body's natural ability to create melatonin. The same thing as if you supplement it with testosterone or any other hormone of that nature. Most experts suggest that you avoid taking melatonin if at all possible, except for on rare occasions where you absolutely need to. There are much more natural ways to help you get better sleep quality. For me, I prefer to use Organifi's Gold Juice at night. It's a powder that you mix into a warm tea and you drink in about 30 minutes before you go to bed. This gold juice has two of the best natural mushroom extracts you can find for sleep, turmeric and reishi. Turmeric is an anti-inflammatory root that is packed with antioxidants. So for those of us that eat lots of inflammatory foods or put a lot of stress on our bodies throughout the day, which I kind of do both, which is not good, this is an amazing way to help combat that inflammation buildup. It also has ginger in it, which is known as an immune boost booster and a great thing to consume to aid in digestion. It is also believed to do a great job of relieving pain and soreness. So turmeric, ginger, good stuff. And then the reishi mushroom that's in the gold juice is known as the king of mushrooms. It is known to soothe and relax and is often used to promote longevity. Reishi is sometimes used by cosmetic manufacturers to make anti-aging products as well. Now another mushroom that's in the gold juice is called turkey tail. This is known for its special ability to improve the gut bacteria balance and improve immunity. So lots of good stuff in that gold juice. And again, I have no affiliation with Organifi, but I love using their products. Now they are a little spendy, but if you need a discount code, you can always use MODEL, M-O-D-E-L, or Mind Pump, M-I-N-D-P-U-M-P, or Ben G20. So MODEL, Mind Pump, Benji20. If you want to get a good discount on Organifi, these are some of the top health and fitness podcasts that I follow, and um, they have great discounts for Organifi, so might as well just use those until I can get my own. You also can take the ingredients that I talked about and just buy those individually, probably fairly inexpensive on Amazon or something, and make your own concoction. As with almost everything in nutrition, it's best to try and consume everything as naturally as possible. But when you have to supplement... I would recommend going with mushrooms and all the things that we just discussed way before you start popping those melatonin pills. So now after all that information, now let's get to the good part, the meat and potatoes, the actionable things that we can do to really get the best quality sleep possible. Remember, it's not only about the time in bed, but it's the quality of overall sleep that you're getting when you're in it. The things that we're going to talk about now are going to help you be a master of sleep and seriously have major long-term benefits to helping you live happier, healthier, and in the context of this podcast at least, help you lose stubborn body fat as well. If you want a full masterclass on sleep, I can't recommend enough one of my favorite health and fitness experts, Sean Stevenson's book called Sleep Smarter. Sleep Smarter by Sean Stevenson. If you have not read that and you struggle with sleep, you got to. What are you doing? Get on it. That's the best book on sleep that you will find hands down. Sleep Smarter, Sean Stevenson. All right, friends, so get your pens and papers out and take some notes. Here we go. How to create a sleep routine and a sleep sanctuary for better sleep. Number one, create a routine that leads the brain to knowing that sleep is coming. Just like when you wake up and you get ready for work, or if you're like me and when you work out, you have a whole pre-workout routine where you get your pre-workout drink and you get your clothes ready, your gear ready, you get your playlist all set up, and you really focus on telling your body that it's about to go down in the gym. Well, you should be doing the exact same thing to prepare your body and mind for sleep. Instead, what most of us do is that we come home from work. We prepare dinner and we get all riled up with the household. Then we sit in front of a screen and we watch all sorts of stuff that gets our cortisol levels up and loads our eye full of blue light. And when we decide that it's time for bed, we shut everything off abruptly and we lay down. And then we wonder, why is our brain going 100 miles per minute? And why can't I fall asleep for the next 30 or 60 minutes? Man, we got to take a step back and we got to use some common sense. This is going to be a challenge, but your sleep routine should start about 90 minutes before you lay in bed. The melatonin hormone in the body, it's released during dim light exposure. So 
dim the lights. As soon as the sun goes down, that's exactly what you should be changing the lights to a super low level in your environment. Now you can use red light Himalayan salt lamps or even candles, but just you don't want to use those fluorescent lights. If this is not an option for you right now, you can at least turn on one small light in a distant hallway or a lamp that is shaded and put it away from you. Or finally, you could get some blue light blocker glasses. There is a little bit of research on blue light blocking glasses where there's two different kinds. You have the nighttime blue light blocker glasses and you have the daytime blue light blocker glasses. You want to get yourself a pair of the nighttime glasses and wear those at night when the sun goes down until you can really change the lighting in your house. For me, I use True Dark blue light blockers. True Dark is T-R-U-E-D-A-R-K. Um, but there are tons of different types on the market out there. Next, what you want to do is you want to do something to calm your mind. You want to take away all the higher intense stuff that's going around the house that overstimulate you. So this means no crazy Netflix series. Shut down your social media scrolling. God, get off that social media. There is nothing good that happens on social media past 9 p.m. Just get off. Read with the correct lighting, of course. If you can read, maybe with a candle or with a red light Himalayan salt lamp, um, that's a great way to control and bring your mind down. You can also do breath work, um, meditation, yen yoga. You could do mindfulness. You could journal, listen to an audio book or a podcast. Something that I do before my bedtime routine is I listen to an audiobook or a podcast for an hour, and while I'm doing that, I do some lower intensity mobility work. Once I'm done with a chapter or once that podcast is over, I turn on a yen yoga flow. So yen yoga is Y-I-N. Um, I turn on a yen yoga flow on YouTube, but I don't look at the screen. Yen yoga is a type of yoga that involves deep stretching. And you hold that stretch for minutes at a time. I'm talking three or five minutes. And you just focus on calming the mind and breathing. You can breathe into the muscles and actually feel them relax if you concentrate enough. It's been an absolute game changer for me. I really can't recommend enough yen yoga enough to finish your day. So Y-I-N yoga. You could also take a hot shower or get into a sauna. Do this 30 minutes before bed and do it more in the dark. Your body loves for sleep to have a low core temperature. So as your body sleeps, the core temperature drops. But if you can help your body do this by heating it up a little bit, it's going to be a little counterintuitive. But if you think about it, the body is an adaptative machine, right? So when you get too hot, you sweat and your body cools down. But even if you don't sweat and you get your body temperature up, it's going to try to counteract that by dropping its temperature. And if you can time it right, you can use this adaptation to put yourself into a nice chill state right before bed, which pun intended, put yourself into a nice chill state, perfect for sleep. Along those lines, the next thing that you should do is make your room as cool as possible. The optimal temperature for sleep is around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Some people prefer it just a little bit cooler and others like it a little bit warmer. But everyone is a little bit different, and the clothes that you wear can definitely affect this as well. Studies show that the less you wear before bed, the more cool you stay. So those who sleep in their underwear or naked tend to have better all overall sleep. Now you can definitely control the temperature by opening a window or turning on a fan. And if you don't mind the cost associated with AC, I guess that works too. But for me, I prefer to be a little more consistent. So I invested in a device that cools my bed. They have bed fans that you can put under the covers that will blow air or even mattresses that you can control the temp on either side of the bed for you and your partner. For me, I use what's called a chili pad. It's a small thin mat that you put on the top of your mattress under your sheets and it's controlled by a cool water pump. I absolutely love it. You know the feeling of um, when you hit the cool side of the pillow? Well, this is the same thing when I crawl into bed, but it's over the entire body. It's so nice. It even gives off a quiet little white noise that I love when you turn it on. And speaking of white noise, that is definitely something that you should think about. There's a lot of research on the efficacy of white noise and how it helps to roll through your sleep cycles. You can use a variety of things. Some people prefer fans, or there's even apps on your phone that, that can do it, um, there are a lot of apps that can help with your white or pink noise to help you fall asleep. But for me, 
it, I use the chili pad. Or if I'm not using the chili pad, I'll use an app called the Brain FM app, brain.fm. Um, it does have a, a cost associated with it, but you can use it for breath work. You can use it for meditation. You can put on a deep sleep mode or even a deep focus mode if you're trying to do some deep work. I was actually listening to it all during researching for this podcast. I love the Brain.fm app, and I highly recommend it for multiple use reasons. And the next one is a big one. You have to darken out your room, period. End of story. Zero light. Invest in some blackout curtains for sure. And then any of those small lights that you have in your room, those LED lights, you've got to cover those up. So LED lights from alarm clocks, electronics, even the fire detector might have one. Just get a simple little sticker from the craft store and cover them all up. The more pitch black you can make your room, the better. Trust me on this. Even if your eyes don't see it, like if I wore an eye mask, there are studies done that when a light was shown, shined on the back of someone's knee and that it was the only light in the room, their sleep was still affected. It had to do, I think, with some skin cell receptors having some sort of light sensitivity that's connected to the brain. That, for me, was really crazy to hear. And if you have any more information, I'd love to hear about it. So if you have like any knowledge on that kind of thing, reach out to me. I'd love to talk about it. And then this should probably go without saying, but I'm going to have to say it again. Minimize your distractions. No phones. High intense exercise before bed. No. TV. Uh Uh-uh. Things that hype up your brain, that are scary, that are upsetting, that are sad. Get it out of there. You're looking to calm your mind. Here's a quick little stat for you. Uh, Couples that do not have a TV in their room are twice as much likely to have sex than those that have a TV in their room. So if I were you... I would get that thing out of there. Sex is also a great way to put the body to bed naturally. It releases chemicals that are perfect for getting you to sleep. Well, I mean, unless you're too wild, of course, but let's not go there. Okay, moving on. Uh, I kind of just glanced over the no phones thing, but friends, this is huge. Take your phone out of your room, seriously. And none of this, I use my phone as an alarm excuse. No way. Get it out. Literally can perch purchase a $5 alarm clock on Amazon. Your phone is a huge distraction. And if you get notifications, it's constantly lighting up. And most importantly, right when you get up, what's the first thing that you do? You look at it and then you're bombarded by the worst crazy social media friends and all this crap right off the bat. That's the worst way to start your day. I'll make sure to do an episode on how to start your day as well, but I'll say it again. No phones in the bedroom. If that's the one change that you make, you'll still notice big quality benefits. Um, Again, so here's my routine. 90 minutes before bed, all the lights go off. I have candles around the house for light. I listen to a podcast or an audiobook while I do mobility work that's kind of nice and low intensity, and that usually takes an hour. Then I take a warm shower and I get into my comfy pajama pants. I drink my gold juice, I listen to brain.fm on relax mode, and then I do yen yoga on YouTube, but no screen. I just listen to the cues. I usually do yen yoga for about 30 minutes, depending on how I'm feeling and how long the YouTube video is and how sore my body is. Side note, if you have any kind of chronic pain, especially the kind that creeps up at night, yen yoga is for you. And then I hop into my sleep sanctuary, completely dark room, chili pad set to 64 degrees, water bottle by my side, small loose pajama shorts on only, and then brain.fm with the deep sleep mode on. I fall asleep almost instantly. I'm not joking, almost instantly. And I make sure I do this with an eight hour window in mind and when I need to get up in the morning. So if I have to get up at seven, I'm definitely in bed before 11. So I hope this helps y'all out, and I hope you really start to put sleep at the top of your priority list. Please reach out to me if you need any help or have any questions, or even if you're going to buy some of the things that I talked about. I'm sure we can find a discount code from one of the hundreds of health professionals that I follow. I promise you, if you can optimize your sleep, if you can get this huge pillar, this huge rock dialed in, what's going to do for you professionally in your relationships with your health and fitness fat loss goals You will be absolutely shocked at how much your life will change for the better when you prioritize the importance of sleep. All right, Dream Team, that's it for today. Please share with me any knowledge, thoughts, or questions you may have on today's topic. I'll make sure to answer and discuss on the next episode. 
You can ask your questions in the comments section or message me on any of the social media platforms. Also, I would be so thankful if you shared this episode with any of your friends or family that may be able to benefit from today's podcast. I would love it if you could do me a solid and screenshot this podcast and share it on your social media platforms and just write one takeaway, one aha moment that you got from this episode. This will help me know what's really valuable to you and so I can keep the good information coming. And it also lets your network know if this podcast is worth a listen to them. Thank you so much for listening and learning here with us on the Live in the Dream podcast. We are so grateful for you being a part of this lifelong learning journey. If you have any topics you'd like to discuss, please let us know in the comments or by messaging me on Instagram at CoachDamian underscore SD. Be kind to someone today. Smile at someone today and leave every person you come into contact with better than before. Until next time, friends, keep living the dream.